Welcome to video number three of our five part Friday night YouTube takeover. If that's not what we're calling it, then I've already called it that now, so we're just going to have to stick with it. So if you don't know what it is already, five YouTubers have decided to get together to give you an alternative to Friday Night TV because let's be honest, Friday Night TV is kind of rubbish. So we're hoping to give you something different to watch. It's already kicked off with Phil Miranda at the Miranda Detailing Channel. He will then have passed on to David at the Epic Car Show. David will pass on to me, so you're here now. Then after my video, you're going to go over and watch Paul Dolden's channel. And then once you've watched his video, he'll pass on to Siviki. She will then pass everybody back around to the beginning to fill. So don't worry if you haven't seen the first two videos. Just keep on following down the train. Vicky will pass you back to the beginning again. So my video today, if you have already watched my videos, you may know about this. If you haven't, recently I made a video about the three cheapest paste waxes I could buy on Amazon. Here they are. And the short story of these is one is a good all-rounder and a decent value. One is a bit more expensive, requires lots more effort, but gives really good results. And the other one is absolutely not worth your time or money. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link down in the description below. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about mid-range waxes. After talking about the cheapest ones I could find, mid-range. Mid-range prices for waxes are very much varied. The waxes I'm going to be showing you today move anywhere from about £15 up to, well, retail price of £55. Keep in mind, you can often buy these cheaper when you look online and find good deals. So the first wax is Built Hammer's Double Speed Wax. This I've had for a few years now. It cost me about £15 and it's generally available for around about that price as well. It often comes with a sponge applicator to apply it. I haven't used that today for two reasons. One, I can't find it, don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, the other is that I'm going to apply them all with the same kind of applicator, so there's no favoritism between them. So this is a blend of Carnuba and synthetic hydrophobic polymers. So it's a hybrid wax, it contains two different things. So the Carnuba wax, that's the natural wax that comes from uh, palm trees, that is for the depth of shine and gloss, enhancement of color, nice water behavior. The hydrophobic polymers, they give extra in the water behavior. They tend to be more resilient to washing and last that little bit longer. So say 15 pounds and you get in this tin, I believe, yet 250 milliliters of wax. That's a good amount of wax for the money, really nice. Next up for the pricing is Meguiar's Gold Class Carnuba Plus Wax. There we go that way. So this one is exactly that, it's Carnuba Plus. Just like the, the other wax there, it is a blend of Carnuba plus protecting polymers. Nice thing about this one, it's a very big tin. This cost me just under 20 pounds, 19 pound something, I believe. The tin there holds uh, an applicator inside it. Again, I'm not going to use that today. Uh, and that's the wax there, it has become cracked. It was cracked before I bought it. But you get a lot of wax in this pot. Uh, this is 311 grams. That one says milliliters, this one says grams. Fair enough. But that's a good size of pot for 20 pounds. Pretty good going there. Then next up is G3 Pro's Super Gloss Paste Wax. And this one price wise was very similar to the Meguiar's just under 20 pounds. Depends where you're buying them from. Make sure you, you do a good bit of searching and deal hunting. And this one is a very similar hard paste wax there. This one also comes in a nice little box with uh, an applicator, but again, I've decided not to use any of these applicators. They're just going on with my own applicators. And finally, the most expensive wax here. I've seen it in shops for 55 pounds, but if you do a bit of deal searching, you can get it for less. This is uh, Auto Glim Ultra High Definition Wax. Now this one is quite a beast. It comes in a lovely presentation box. It's over there somewhere with a dual foam applicator and also a microfiber towel to buff it off. Again, not going to be using any of those. This one is also a blend of Carnuba and other things. They don't go into much detail about it. This one is also a paler wax than the others. It may not come across on the camera so well here with that light, but it is a lighter color of wax than the other three. Anyway, as far as application is concerned, I'm going to be using these. Uh, I got these from SGCB. They very kindly sent over these applicators. They are embossed with their logo. They're, they're nice, they're decent, they're 
kind of not too firm but not too soft, uh, decent quality. I'm going to be using one of each of these for the four waxes there. So they're all going to be applied the same and they're all going to be buffed off with the same kind of towel. So without further ado, we've talked about it. Let's take them out to the car and see how they behave. So here we are starting with Built Hammer's Double Speed Wax. This gives you a better look in daylight as opposed to my silly studio light. And here I'm going to be using a brand new SGCB applicator and this wax does state that you need to dampen your applicator beforehand so I've already done that. Wiping around to pick some up. It is quite a hard wax so only a small amount does come up. And it's not difficult to apply, it's not as easy as some other waxes I've used in the past, but it's certainly not a difficult wax to use by any means. It does feel perhaps a tad grabbier than some other waxes I've used, but I've also felt many which were much worse too. So I'm going over here with a relatively thin and even application and I'm going over again on the way up to make sure it is as evenly applied as possible. Next up is the Gold Class Carnuba Plus Wax from Meguiar's. There's the wax, cracked before I received it. There's the applicator that I'm not using. Another brand new applicator. And going in, this genuinely looked like a hard wax, but after wiping it on, it turns out this is actually quite soft. So I picked up a good bit more than I meant to. But as you can see here, because there was a lot of wax, it was very easy to apply. It was very buttery smooth. You can see the difference there. It's much darker. And that's just because there is so much wax on the pad. It was also nice to note that with the built hamber, that one small swipe was able to cover that whole section on the left side. Obviously the Meguiar's, well, I would expect it to do the same thing, even though I overloaded the application there. And you can see there, it looks softer. You can see there's been some movement with the wax. So it is a softer wax than it looks. Here's the G3 Pro Professional Super Gloss Paste Wax. Another hard looking wax. And again, another brand new applicator sponge. Small amount on there, it was a hard wax. So it did take a little bit more wiping to pick some up. But as you can see, a thin enough application and this one was just like the others that small amount that was picked up is able to cover the whole section that I want it could do a, a fair distance more I would reckon from all three that I've tried so far just overlapping motions gently smooth and easily very straightforward to apply this one this was really nice and smooth and yet again, going over again, just to make sure it's as evenly applied as possible. And then finally, the Auto Glim Ultra High Definition Wax. This one also requires a damp applicator, so that sponge, brand new, has been dampened. And you can see it actually looks quite soft there. It doesn't look super hard, so I had to be careful that it didn't swiped too hard into it and you could still see it was relatively soft i don't know if it was because of the temperature it was a relatively warm day it was relatively high humidity but this one was the most enjoyable to apply definitely it seemed to be really smooth really nice going on the paint i really couldn't argue with this application at all and yet again that one small swipe was able to pick up more than enough to cover the area I wanted. Well, you can see there, it just looks like it goes on just that little bit thinner. It was relatively decent. I, I honestly couldn't argue with this at all. So after reaching the bottom, yet again, another wipe over to make sure that it's as evenly applied as possible. Coming over with my buffing towel, and now it's time to check and see if these have cured at all. Following the directions about how long they should cure, each one is different, but the temperatures and the weather do make a difference. So there on the built hammer, it didn't really show a clean swipe. The Meguiar's did, so that's cured and ready to go. 
going around to the G3 Pro after kicking the camera. And that one was, well, nearly, almost. And the Autoglim, not quite. So, starting off with the built hamber, giving it a gentle buff. I didn't have to work this hard. It was a little sticky, especially towards the top, which was the section which I had applied to first. Like I say, it wasn't difficult, but it just required a little bit more effort than I possibly would like. But by no means is this a difficult product to use. Flipping the towel to a clean side for the final buff, you can definitely see there's very nice shine and gloss to that section of the paint. Flipping the towel now to reveal two clean sides again for the Meguiars. It came off very nicely indeed, even though it had been overloaded. And I was pointing out there that I could see a bit of a line, a bit of a difference between the built hamber and the Meguiars, where the Meguiars side just looked a little deeper, a little darker, a little glossier. It wasn't possible to pick up on camera, but I could definitely see it there. And it did feel just a little bit slicker. Not by much, but just underneath that towel, it just felt like it was just that wee bit slicker than the built hamber. And a touch test just to confirm. It was very, very close. Flipping the towel again to reveal more clean sides as we go over to the next section. So this will now be the G3 Pro. Looking for a clean swipe ready to go. This one was lovely. This one came off without any real effort at all. It had a good amount of time to cure and it came off really nicely. No excess residue, no powder, no drying, nothing at all. It was a really quick buffing wax, this one. Really nice. I got around it very, very quickly indeed. Over to the clean side for a final buff. And again, it also felt very slick under the towel very smooth. Flipping the towel one last time and we're going to be looking at the Autoglim Ultra High Definition Wax. Here the swipe was not conclusive but it had the right amount of time for curing and it didn't come off quite as nicely as I would have hoped. It came off Perhaps just a little bit more difficult than I had imagined because it went on so nicely. But again, by no means difficult. It was easier than the built hamber and perhaps just a little bit easier than the Meguiars. Flipping to the dry side for a final buff whilst getting distracted by something going on across the street there. I have no idea what it was. Now. Time to have a look across the panels and a touch test, to have a feel. What do they feel like? How slick do they feel? So the Auto Glim was slick. The G3 Pro was a bit slicker. The Meguiars was also nice and slick. Very similar to the G3 Pro, very hard to tell. And there, thumbs down for the built hamber really wasn't as slick as the other three. But that was kind of expected by me at least, because generally speaking, products which are more hydrophobic tend to be slightly less slick. But there you go, there are the beads on the built hamber side. Very, very uniform beads. You could use that as a wallpaper on your phone or on your desktop or computer. Very, very nice uniform beads. The Meguiars, still nice beads, but not quite as uniform. You can see they're different shapes, not just different sizes, but different shapes. More like beans rather than beads. 
over on the G3 Pro side. Perhaps not as bad as the Meguiar's. I say bad, it's not really bad. But not as uniform as the built hamber and a little bit better than the Meguiar's. And spraying a bit more water here onto the Auto Glim and going far too close. Nice, relatively uniform beads there. I'd say that gets second place. G3 Pro would get third, and the Meguiar's would get fourth. Now, let's throw some more water on here and see how the panel behaves with more of a deluge of water. You can see there, it's all running away nicely. But if you pay a bit closer attention there, you'll see that the built hamber the water wants to get off that panel a bit more quickly. You can see there's less water sitting on the panel. The Meguiar's is holding on to it just a little bit more. The G3 Pro isn't bad at all. It's pretty good. You can see big sections where the water has rolled off. And then over to the Auto Glim, it's a similar situation to the built hamber there. Mostly clear. Very nice. This is more of a sheeting look here. You can see when it's had a big amount of water thrown on it. Here I'm simulating heavy rain, so I'm going to leave those beads all across there. You can see the difference. I'm trying to be as equal and even as possible with the distribution of the water. So the Auto Glim and the Built Hamber are definitely the most impressive so far, but the G3 Pro and the Meguiar's certainly aren't bad. Here is a proper flood. Auto Glim wants to get rid of it very quickly. G3 Pro wants to sheet before disappearing quickly. The Meguiar's looks like it hangs on to that water just a little bit more, but still sheets nicely. And the built hamber, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Here's the difference between the built hamber and the Meguiar's. And you can see the Meguiar's is still hanging on to that water there. Built hamber wants to get rid of it very quickly. Between the Meguiar's and the G3, not a massive difference, but the G3 just has the edge on them there. Just wants to get rid of that water just a little bit more quickly. And then between the G3 and the Auto Glim, and you can see the Auto Glim also wants to get rid of that water very quickly. And lovely clean sheeting. Now, after being re wetted, what I've decided to do is use the Garage Therapy Zero Decon Shampoo diluted at 10 to 1 in a spray bottle, as you can see here. This is what I'm going to use. I'm going to put four sprays on the panel, one on each section of the waxes, and I'm going to spray one spray on a microfiber after kicking the camera again, and wiping in a straight line from one side to the other to see how these behave. So rinsing off any of the soaps, surfactants, shampoos, anything that came from the Zero Decon shampoo there. And already you can see a difference in that center section. The Meguiar's and the G3 have definitely taken a hit. The G3 not as much as the Meguiar's. You can see they are still beading, so there is still some good protection there, but they have taken a hit. The Auto Glim on the right, the Built Hamber on the left, both performing absolutely the same as before. No issues there at all. You can see that center section between the G3 and the Meguiar's definitely hanging on to that water. A second go now, a second one spray on each panel or each section and one spray on the microfiber. And walking in front of the camera again. Great job, Specky. And another rinse off. Is there any difference? Built Hamber and Auto Glim still look like they're hanging on very nicely indeed. No real immediate change. Maybe just the tiniest amount, but really nothing worth mentioning, to be perfectly honest. The Meguiar's and the G3 still taking a big hit there. Built Hamber doing really well and also the Auto Glim. Let's see how they sheet. 
Autoglim sheets very nicely. G3 and Maguire's not doing so well. You can see though the G3 is still ridding the water from its section just that little bit faster. And the built hammer still doing a really good job there. Another go, this time a few straight lines of spray. And another wipe, even pressure. No favoritism here. And another rinse. Now we're starting to see a little bit on the auto glim side there. A little bit was slowing down. The same on the built hammer. They are starting to see a small slowdown, but still not bad. There's still plenty protection there. Soak it and flood it, see what happens. Auto Glim still doing really well. G3 Pro still doing better than the Maguire's. And the built hammer is still doing a good job. You can see there the main differences. Built hammer has slowed down in that one section, but it's still going strong. G3 Pro is still hanging on better than the Maguire's. The auto glim still doing a cracking job. One more application and rinse off. Now you can see the difference. The auto glim is shedding that water faster. The built hammer is starting to slow down now. So this is four applications of the shampoo. I actually did five, but I haven't included the fifth because I thought you guys might get a bit bored now. But there's the main difference. Auto Glim still pushes it away, although it holds onto the water for a little bit. Whereas it sheets away quickly and the built hammer is hanging on just that little bit longer. So there you go, now you've seen how they behave, how they deal with water and how they deal with a chemical attack. So. What I will say about all of these, I'm not going to score them, by the way, like I did with the really cheap ones. I'm not going to give them scores because I don't think that's particularly fair. They're not apples for apples situations here. They are all made slightly differently, but they're all excellent waxes. I really can't fault any of them. What I would say is that I do believe, looking at all of these, as far as a show ability is concerned, I did see maybe just slightly better gloss from the Maguire's and the G3. I just felt like they looked that little bit deeper. It was very, very difficult, nigh on impossible to pick that up on camera, but they looked really good. The drawback, of course, is that they were not so good at being able to fight off the zero shampoo mixture that I had in the bottle there. That makes me think that these are slightly more showy waxes. These are the kind of waxes that you may need to apply a little more regularly. You're gonna to have to be on top of your maintenance to make sure that they stay looking nice. So spray waxes on top of them will, will keep them going that little bit longer. So they're not super, super long lasting. and They won't go through loads of washes. Obviously what I was attacking them with today was, was relatively strong. It is designed to strip waxes and sealants. But you could see the difference there that these were not able to hang on. They were wiped off that little bit easier, but still very, very nice waxes to use. As far as application is concerned, it's it's almost impossible to tell the difference. I did enjoy the gold class, though this was a slightly softer wax. I picked up a lot of it. So there was that. It was a bit more buttery, but I did pick up loads. This one was just as slick to apply, but I didn't pick up so much. So interesting. I say... For being both around about the same price, if you're interested in either one of these two waxes and you can't really decide, I would say don't worry about it. They are practically the same. I know some people have their preferences and that's fine. I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't. But honestly, through my testing, I really wouldn't be able to tell the difference if somebody just handed me a wax applicator with some wax on it and apply and try and pick out between the two. I don't think I could, to be perfectly honest. So that's something to consider. And again, like I said, the same price, that really helps maybe in your decision making. If you're looking to spend about 20 pounds on a wax, both of those are great. Separating these two waxes though, this is a much more difficult job. You would think maybe it would be straightforward. This is a much more expensive wax. It should be much better. I'm not gonna say that it was massively better, but there was an improvement in a few 
uh, areas, key areas. One was the application and removal was much nicer with this, just smoother, more buttery to apply and very easy to buff off as well. It was a very, very user friendly wax. Not to say that the double speed wax wasn't user friendly, it was still very straightforward, it just felt like it needed a little bit more effort to get it onto the panel. It wasn't quite so buttery smooth and the same with the buff off. Buffing it off just required little bits of extra effort and extra buffing to make sure it cleanly came off. When it came to the chemical resistance test though, the Auto Glim did win hands down. It was really that much better. So whatever they're using in this, it's much more chemically resistant uh, than the Double Speed Wax. However, this was the second place as far as fighting off that chemical. So it's still an excellent wax. If you're looking for a, a low priced wax, a paste wax, that will give you good results and will last a decent amount of time, then this is excellent. But if you're looking for something which is that bit more luxurious, although it is the highest price to buy and also the highest price per amount of wax, because you only get 120 grams of wax in this one. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. This one is definitely the most expensive. That being said, being that it's very, very easy to apply and you use very little of it, that pot will still last you a decent amount of applications. And honestly, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this wax. I've used it many times. I'm also really loving this wax because I love a good value for money product. So hopefully all of this information can help you guys to decide what kind of paste wax you may be interested in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to stick around for the Friday night experience that we've got going on here, at the very end of this video, go down into the description box and you'll find a link for Paul Dolden's channel next. Head over and watch his video. He'll pass you over to Siviki. She will loop you back around to the beginning to film Miranda's video and you can start all over again if you've missed any of those previous videos. Thank you very much for joining us on this very special Friday night. But if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And while you're there, make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video uploads. In the meantime, I've been Specky. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.